Hello, welcome to this complete guide on Ableton Live, a digital audio workstation or DAW you can use to build your own music. In just 12 minutes, we will give you all the very basics you need by using the suite version. Ableton Live comes with two different workflows, called Session View and Arrangement View, that you can select from the top right corner. In the Session View, each audio source or track is organized into vertical columns, perfect to make experiments by looping, repeating, and restarting your trials. In the Arrangement View, you get the same sources or tracks horizontally, in order to drop samples and compositions in time to be put together and exported at a later stage. Make sure to review your settings by going to the Options tab, or Live on Mac OS, and then to Preferences. Now, let's start with the Session View. This workspace is made by vertical tracks and several panels that you can hide, and show with their buttons. You may keep the Info panel on the left to get useful information when hovering over tools and buttons. To import audio samples, Drag and drop these onto any slot from any Explorer folder, or from the Browser panel on the left, selecting Samples. These imported files are shown as blocks called clips, collected under Audio Track columns. To remove any clip, just select it and use the Backspace key. To play any clip, click on its Play button. This may play once or loop continuously, as the counter shows at the bottom. Use the spacebar key to stop and resume the playback to get all the looped clips synchronized in time. You may play only one clip per track column, since each column is made to host several variations of the same sound to be tested. This way, you compare similar clips together to find the right tune. You can also play an entire row with the play button under the main or master column to test and compare different combinations. Click on any squared button to stop any track, or the main one on top to stop all of them. Now let's see how to record with your microphone. Click on the Mixer View button at the bottom to show the options for each track, including its input and output sources. On Audio From, go to Configure and select the microphone as input source. Keeping the main track as destination on Audio 2. Arm the track at the bottom and click on any empty slot to start recording. This ignores any other track being played. Stop the recording by clicking on the play button of the same clip. To adjust the properties of any clip, double click on it to open the clip view at the bottom, where you can check the clip waveform. Adjust volume gain and pitch, and enable or disable any loop playback on the left. If the clip is looped, you can set its loop region by dragging the edges of the loop brace on top. If the clip is played once, you can trim it by dragging the end marker from the right. On the left, enable Warp to time-stretch the clip waveform, especially if you want to synchronize the clip with other beats. You can change its tempo and BPM uniformly, or customize it in time by double-clicking on the darker strip and dragging the yellow marker just placed. Now let's understand how to build compositions or MIDI clips. These are made of custom notes, with sound generated from a reference sample a digital synthesizer, or an external instrument. In this video, we won't see how to compose with external instruments. You can import MIDI files directly on any MIDI track, or get others from the browser panel on the left by selecting clips or grooves. You may not import MIDI files onto audio tracks. To start composing from scratch, just double-click on any slot to create an empty MIDI clip. MIDI tracks have no sound by default. 
Open the device view from the bottom right corner to import any audio sample to use as source. By dropping any sample you have, or any from the browser panel, selecting between drums, melodies, or complex synthesizers under the instruments section that you can customize as you like. At this point, switch to the clip view and test the notes on the piano roll by enabling preview above. If sound is good, enable the draw tool from the top right corner and click to drop notes. Playing with the spacebar key. To avoid the grid, hold down the Alt or Command key while dropping any note. Disable the draw tool to click and drag any note to move it. Drag its edges to adjust its duration. And use the Backspace key to remove it. At the bottom, make sure to adjust the velocity for each note. Now let's see how to manage tracks. Right-click on any track name to cut, copy, paste, rename, remove it, or insert new tracks. If you toggle the mixer view, you get several options affecting each track, or the entire sound under the main track, according to what you have enabled from the bottom. Use the send knobs to send the current track sound to A or B tracks on the right. Very useful to mix different track outputs. Below, you get the decibel meter, showing the volume level of the track. Adjust its gain with the left marker, avoiding red levels of distortion on the main track. Use the pan knob to adjust the panning volume. And click on the number to mute or unmute the track. Enable the solo button to mute all other tracks instead. Now, let's see how to add effects. To apply effects to an audio track, open the browser panel on audio effects and drag and drop any onto the device view. These effects affect all the clips belonging to such track. Adjust any effect property through its interface and disable or enable it with its yellow button in the top left corner. As you add effects, you build a side chain from left to right in order. In this case, you can move any effect by clicking and dragging it from its name above. On MIDI tracks, you can apply MIDI effects placed before the synthesizer or sample, and also audio effects placed after when MIDI notes have sound. Now, let's see the arrangement view. This workspace shows a timeline used to build and render your music by placing clips in time. This view shares the same tracks of the session view, including input and output sources, mute and solo buttons, and volume levels. You can also show the complete options with the mixer view as seen. These tracks also share the same effect chain on the device view. Besides the tracks, the arrangement view does not import any clip from the session view, so you have to make music from scratch. To import files into the arrangement view, drag any file onto the timeline, such as samples within audio tracks and compositions within MIDI tracks. Clips show their names in either waveforms or notes inside. You can zoom on the timeline with your mouse wheel while holding down the control or command key. Drag on the overview bar on top to quickly navigate on the timeline. The timeline is measured in bars and beats above and in seconds at the bottom. Click on the timeline to set the blue marker as the starting point, with bars and beats shown on top, and play all with the player above. You can also use the spacebar key to play and stop while restarting from the same starting point or the spacebar key plus shift to resume from the last point. If you can't play the timeline, make sure to click on Back to Arrangement to discard the session view. In the Arrangement view, you can import the work you have made on the session view. Set the starting point on the timeline, switch to the session view, and enable the main record button on top. Anything you play will be dropped on the timeline, such as single clips, 
or entire rows on the same tracks used. Use the stop button on top to finish. During this recording, the timeline clips are totally ignored and kept disabled until you click on Back to Arrangement. If no recording is running on the session view, both the session clips and the timeline are played, as you can see from the involved tracks at the bottom. In the top left corner, set time signature and adjust the project tempo. This fixes the conversion rate between beats and bars into seconds, measured in BPM. The tempo affects all MIDI clips, which result faster or slower. It does not affect audio samples, which get looped or cut according to the chosen value. To manage the timeline clips, click on any clip to select it and drag it to move it in time or in another track avoiding any snapping with the ALT or the COMMAND key. Use CONTROL or COMMAND in X, C, or V to cut, copy, or paste the selected clip. You can also hold down the ALT key and drag on the clip to select and edit portions of it. Use the BACKSPACE key to remove any clip and the CONTROL or COMMAND and Z to undo any action. To save your project, go to File, Save Live set as. Ableton projects are saved in .als format. Collecting anything from both the session and the arrangement view. To export your project, go to File, Export Audio Video. On top, select the main track to render all the tracks. To render a specific part of the project, click right below the timeline with the Alt key and drag the edges of such region. This will set render start and length timestamps when you export. Set sample rate, file type, and bit depth according to your preferences, and go to export. Thank you very much for watching this complete guide on Ableton Live. Make sure to check our YouTube channel and our website to get more free guides on audio production.